this is what it means. The power of God or the Holy Spirit will always direct you to strike what is against God, no matter how strong it seems. There's going to be things that he's going to, he's going to open your eyes and he's going to give you understanding. There's going to be things that seem so strong and they're wicked. And he said, listen, God's not telling you to just turn your head and ignore it. He's saying, strike it. You strike the fortified cities of the enemy. You strike those things that are strong and they're, um, they're intimidating. God wants you to stand with faith against that spiritual intimidation of wickedness and, and strike it. How do you strike it? What's that talking about? This is important. You remember, you have one of your pieces of, one of the things you fight against wickedness with is the word of God. So he says, strike it. That's one. Number two, so not only do you need to have the sword of the word of God, you're going to be in the word. You need to be in the word. You can't afford not to be in the word of God. Number two, you're going to arm yourselves, as we covered last week, with the attitude to suffer. You're going to suffer. These fortified cities, you strike them, and there, and, and that, that's two, but there's a trinity in that, and the third one is prayer. And you're going to strike it with prayer. So you're going to pray in faith against those things. You're going to bring the word of God against those things. Amen. And you're going to arm yourself with the attitude to suffer in the flesh. You're going to suffer in in your life try, as you go to battle with these things. But why do we do that? Because God says, this is what you do. You strike the fortified city. So a fortified city appears impenetrable. It appears strong. It's intimidating. There are sins in life. There's wickedness in the land here in America. And these things are growing and they're intimidating. And it always feels like saying, ah, oh, just forget it. No, we, the church, we should be, we should be prayer warriors at this time, praying and striking these, these fortified cities of wickedness um, and tearing them down in faith in the name of Jesus. We can dismantle these things in prayer long before they happen. Listen, I, I've seen this work repeatedly. I, I've, I, I've prayed against bars, prayed against establishments of wickedness, places that I knew were doing evil. We prayed against crack houses, against bars. You know what? They're closed. They're gone. They're not there anymore. You can do that. This is, you strike with prayer of faith. You bring the word of God against it. And you stand on it. Amen. And whatever warfare comes against you in the suffering, you just set it in your heart. You're going to suffer. That's your attitude. Like Jesus did. And so this is so important. We see this. You strike the fortified city. The Holy Spirit, the power of God will always lead you and direct you to strike what is against God. This is why you need to know the word of God because what comes up in the world, you compare, it, you compare it to the word. If it doesn't match the word, it's against God. No matter how strong it appears or seems, you go against it and you strike it. So you strike it again with what? With the word, you strike it with prayer and you strike it with the attitude to suffer. The second thing, strike every choice city. The power of God or the Holy Spirit of God will always direct you to strike the most favorable, the most favorable sins, the most favorable wickedness in our country. This is why the church needs to rise up against the immorality, flee it in our own lives, and then rise up against it. We need to rise up against the abortion and the murder and the immorality. Uh, we need to, you know, rise up against the greed and the selfishness. These things are the choice things, the choice cities, the prize um, means by which the enemy brings a nation and brings individuals down to destruction and ushers in the judgment and correction of God. We need to 
again, strike. So remember, we strike, we strike that which is fortified, that is, um, um, that seems impenetrable. We strike those things, but we also strike the choice things, the things the enemy loves and cherishes. And you can see it in our nation. You can see it. The immorality, um, the, the ab abortion murder, you, you can see it in the, I, the gender uh, issues and crises. Um, it's just, it's total insanity in our nation being perpetrated by those in power to press, to turn it into law and try to enforce it upon you and I and our children. We need to start standing. We need to start striking through prayer in the word of God against these things. We're to be aggressive, not in the physical sense. I'm not talking about a physical aggression. I'm talking about a spiritual aggression. God is not calling you to a physical aggression. He's calling you to a spiritual aggression. The gates of hell will prevail against physical aggression, but the gates of hell will not prevail against spiritual aggression in prayer. When faith takes the kingdom of God by force, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Amen. No weapon forged against you is going to prosper when you are moving in a spiritual aggression by faith. And it means you let go. I mean, yeah, it means you let go of the things of the world and you go to war against them in prayer. Stop letting the world be, um, stop letting the world be that which intoxicates us and, and take a hold of the word of God and take your victory by faith. Because when you, when the church does that, we have the trinity of victory enforcing it behind us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we have strike twice, mentioned here twice, strike twice, fortified cities and choice cities. What that which seems impenetrable, too strong, and that which seems like the favorite, the choice, the most promoted. Ask God to open your eyes to what the devil most promotes in society today. Look at what's being shoved down your throat through the media. Look at what's being forced upon us in the laws that are being passed. Look at the wickedness. That's what you strike. That's what you strike. I can't stress the importance of this enough. We need 2021 is a year that we strike. This is the year we strike the fortified cities. This is the year we strike the choice cities of the devil. Those invisible kingdoms, strongholds, fortresses, sins and wickedness that he's promoting, we need to strike those things in prayer. Amen. Shaking our heads in disbelief, frustration, and anger is not the response that God has called us to, and it's not the response that Jesus died for. We need to be about striking these things in prayer with the Word of God and with arming ourselves with that attitude to suffer. No matter what the cost, we will stand against it. We will voice, we will voice what God's word says, and we will pray against it. He goes on to say, they're to cut down every good tree. Remember the word fell was in use in the scripture, the new King James I was reading from. But the but the word the idea is to cut it down. Listen, the power of God, the Holy Spirit of God will always lead you or direct you to remove that which nourishes your enemy. He will always lead you to remove that which nourishes your enemy. And, and the two things that nourish the enemy and what's going on in this world 
is, is an attitude of rebellion and a love for self. We need to remove those things. Those are, those are spiritual trees. Spirit, they have the spiritual roots in our lives and they have a spiritual rooting in our nation. And we can see the sin of rebellion, which is the same as witchcraft. And we can see the love of self, which scripture clearly says in the end days, the last days, men will become lovers of self and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And so we need to see and understand these things and do what? We need to cut them down. We need to cut them down. You say, well, okay, so if striking, then what, what, what's cut mean? How do you cut something down? Well, it's the same thing. You go to war against it. You cut it down. There's a denial, a rejection and a denial. And the word of God is what's sharper than any two-edged sword. We cut these trees down with the word of God. With the word of God. These things nourish and strengthen the enemy. Then it says, stop all the springs of water. The power of the whole and the Holy Spirit of God will always lead and direct you to stop all that refreshes your enemy. Listen, think about this. What is it that would what is it that empowers and refreshes the enemy? What gives him strength? You ready for this? What gives him strength is the worship. You say, well, wait a minute, what's that? What do you mean? It's the false worship. The enemy always paints what he's doing as being good for you, acceptable for you to do. There's nothing wrong with it. He'll, he'll come in and lie. He told the world, there's no higher power to answer to. You have, or, the, or there is a God, but he's not involved in your life. He doesn't care what you're doing, whether good or bad. So you have the atheists, the agnostics, they're all believing these lies. Well, but what's really pathetic is you have people in the church believing it. And, and these things are, the enemy uses these things to come in and bring destruction, absolute destruction in people's lives and even in nations around the world. He, listen, do you realize what the devil wants to bring upon the people of the world? He wants to bring damnation, death, eternal suffering. He wants people to be so deceived that they will march right off into hell for all eternity. You and I are in a position by the power of God, the message of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit to, to be a hindrance and a stop and see souls saved. That's what we are to be laboring for. You are destined for victory. What's the victory? It's the victory is you and I moving in the will of God. That's the victory. So let's, let's just stop all the springs. Let's stop giving worship. Let's stop giving worship to the world. Let's stop giving worship to the things of this world, the ways of this world. Let's stop. Let's change our conversation. Let's stop talking about all the wickedness that's going on. And let's start talking about the power and the love and the freeing power of the love of God. He demonstrated through his son shedding his blood on the cross to set us free. Amen. We can do that. You can do that. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice whether it's your choice whether you lay a hold of the victory. Christ died for you for. Will you, I, will you do it? Will you be bold enough? You know, it's amazing to me. People today will go to all extremes in following the things in the world. And in so many things, look like a fool, a total fool. Think of the deception that's upon people today in doing the things they do and look like just so ridiculous. I would rather, I would rather follow God and look like a fool to the world. Wouldn't you? I would rather do that than to look like the foolishness of the world and be against God. Remember, John said to 1 John, a, f a friend of the world is the enemy of God. My paraphrase, but that's it. 
Anyone who makes himself a friend of the world is an enemy of God. We need to understand and know that we don't have. This world is not our friend. And this world's not going to love us if we're living for Jesus. It's going to hate us because it hated Christ first. And you got to prepare yourself for that. You need to start doing it now. You need to prepare your heart now. If you're following Jesus, if you want to follow Jesus, then know this, less and less people are going to like you. Less and less people in the church are going to like you. And as Oswald Chambers said, to the man or woman who seeks the heart of God and follow him, even those within the church will be offended by them. It says here, we're to stop all the springs of water. That water is the worship of God. It's the, it's the worship of, of, I mean, that, that is the worship of the God of this world. It's the, Satan is the one, and the demons are the ones who are receiving the false worship. They get all the attention. It's like it's sometimes like God doesn't get any attention till Sunday morning or whatever. Like we need to give God the attention all the time. We need to bring everything we experience in a day, bring it into the light of God's presence and his word. No matter what comes your way in a day, you say, you know what? This happened, but include God in it. And then speak the reality that God is greater than whatever it is you had to deal with. Amen. Temptations that way. Trials, suffering, all that is that way. Finally, we'll close with this instruction. He says, mar every good piece of land with stones. Now, this is an interesting instruction God gives here. The power of God will always direct you to stop the sowing of the enemy. Listen, Moabites, they had taken good land. They, 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 they had land that they sowed into and it produced crops and they could plow it. Well, he, God says, you go in there and you mar it with what? With stones. In other words, so they can't plow it, so they can't plant. This is a very interesting picture. I want to challenge you today. You know, you can mar the enemy's ground. Amen? You can mar the enemy's ground. You say, well, what does that mean? That means that wherever you and I go, we plant God's stones in. That means you and I, here it is again. It's just another picture, an example for us to get. You and I, through our prayer and our faith, in our, in our arming ourselves to suffer for Christ through the word of God, we can plant symbolically, we can throw stones in the ground of the enemy. They're good ground, you can mess it up. That's, that's what this means. It's like the, the, the Israel went in there and as they, as they pushed the enemy back, it took, they marred the ground so that they couldn't use it. It'd be hard for them. We need to start marring the ground of the enemy so he can't use it amen i've seen this when we pray prayed against places and it's like you can see it getting hard for them it gets hard for them we said what are you talking about the enemy has territories demonic powers rule over territory you can start marring their ground start start planting the the what's the scripture say jesus is the a stone of what? Stumbling and a rock of offense. I tell you what, plant Jesus in the ground. You say, well, what do you, how do you do that? You go in when you're passing through that land, whether it's your job, um, whether you people you meet in a day, plant Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. You can mar the ground of the enemy. This is how we do it. And, what, and, what, and then the working of the enemy becomes hard in those things. Why? Because there's the witness of the word of God. You have sown the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ in somebody's life. They may not get saved while you're talking to them. They may not, you know, uh, um, they may not turn from their wicked ways as you're talking to them. But when you stand up and say, you know, um, I can't support that, whatever it is, I can't support it because it's sin in the eyes of God. I can't support it. 
I follow, I live by a higher authority. I want to honor God rather than, rather than the false deceptive leadership of our nation passing the laws that they are. You have every right under God to stand up against those things. And you're going to be labeled an anarchist. You're going to be labeled, uh, you're going to be labeled unpatriotic. You're going to be labeled someone who brings division. You're, you're, they're going to be labeled as someone who doesn't believe in unity in America. The church needs to be and stand up for righteousness and start planting stones in marring the ground of the enemy. And we do that by sharing Jesus. We do that by the testimony of Christ being on our lips. We do that through our prayer lives. We do that through sharing the word because the word became flesh when Jesus was born. And so every time you share the word, you're sharing Jesus. But you need to start marring the ground around us. We need to do this as the church. We're destined for victory. You and I are destined we are destined to seek the counsel of God against the battle that's against us today. We're destined for victory. We're destined to do what? We're not only destined to seek the counsel of God, but we're destined to hear the word of the Lord declare to us that I will give the enemy into your hands. You and I need to hear that. Every believer needs to hear this, that that is your destiny. You are destined to overcome the enemy. You're destined to strike every fortified city. You're destined, you're destined to strike that which seems impenetrable. That's what you're called to. You're destined to strike every choice city of the enemy. You're destined to try, strike those favorable things of wickedness that the enemy's promoting today. You and I are called to stand against those things in righteousness and see them come down in the name of Jesus Christ. And if we are persecuted for it, or if we should die for it one day, then so be it. But there is going to be a testimony of that. We're called to fell every good tree that the enemy is drawing nourishment from. We're called to, we're called to stop the springs that are bringing the enemy refreshment. We're called to bring an end to our role in any worship of the things of this world. We're called to make this stand. And we're called to mar the ground of the enemy through the planting of these stones, put them in there, put them in the ground. Listen, there's so much to be said on this. I hope you can, are grasping a little bit of what I'm sharing here. But these instructions are given in victory and in maintaining the victory that you're destined for. This is the time. This is the season for this. And 2021, is this is the time that we strike. Not physically. This is not physical. This is spiritual. This is through your prayer life and through your measure of faith and through your obedience to the word of God. We need to start seeing these things come down in Jesus' name. These things need to come down in Jesus' name. I hope you can stand in faith in this. I hope you can receive this. I hope you know Jesus as your savior and you believe in him and you trust him that this, even at this, uh, this level of what we're talking about, that is your victory that is destined for you. I pray you can hear it and start moving forward in it. Seek it before the Lord. Seek this out before the Lord. Amen. He has so much ahead of us. We are destined for victory and we're destined. Listen, we're destined for victory against the devil in our own lives personally in your life, you got victory. In this nation, you got victory. Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. I pray that you would encourage your people today and, and that we would understand and know that as the instructions that Elisha gave to win this battle against the Moabites, that we could hear it in our hearts, receive it, and, and move in it by faith. So Lord, we're asking you today, Teach us. Teach us, God. Train our hands for war, like David said in the Psalms. Not physical. Not a physical. I'm not talking about a march on D.C. I'm not talking about uh, any physical form of weapons. I'm talking 
about spiritual marches. I'm talking about a spiritual stance for you. I'm talking about spiritual weaponry. I'm talking about spiritual battles. I'm talking about spiritual victories that will be manifested in the physical realm. When we see these things that look impenetrable and too strong, when we see them come down in the name of Jesus, when we see them come down in people's lives personally, Father, we just seek your face today. Without you, without your instruction, your revelation and your wisdom, we, we won't move. We need to hear from you. Show us what to pray against. Show us where to stand in faith. Show us who to talk to, God. Lead us to the people who are seeking freedom and deliverance in you from the wrath to come because your wrath is coming. And in that day, who will be able to stand? Lord, we give this to you. We yield to you today. Help us to understand and know in our hearts that we are destined for victory and that is enforced. It is enforced because God the Father promised it, the Son won it, and the Holy Spirit imparts it to us. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Pray you have a great day. We'll see you soon.